Okay, so when it comes to solving an equation like this in algebra, there is a specific step that almost every algebra student gets wrong. And even if those students get it right, nine times out of 10, they got lucky. They don't even realize that it is an issue. And uh, this is, again, a very important step. And if you don't understand this step, you will get problems like this wrong. So you don't want to just get lucky to solve an equation like this. But let's see how you do with this problem. So the question is 3 minus the square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to 8. And of course, you want to solve for the variable m. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve an equation like this and highlight this very, very critical step. And if you don't understand this, you're going to have a tough time in algebra. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem here. We have three minus the square root of two m plus two is equal to eight. What is the answer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. So the correct answer is the following. Okay, it's this answer right here, which is there is no answer. Now, if you got this right here as your answer, well, that's an indication that you did a good job, but you did not understand this step. So again, most students, almost everyone is going to make this error. Okay, so in fact, again, uh, just to uh, be clear about this, if you um, determine that there is no solution, and that's what this means right here, this is a zero, but effectively this is a little fancy word in uh, mathematics called null. Basically, it's an empty set. In other words, there is no answer to this equation, but some of you are not convinced. Some of you are saying, ah, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is the answer. You're wrong. I'm right. I checked my answer. And uh, this is the big kind of main point of this video. It's about checking your answer into the original solution, which is an absolutely necessary step in these type of equations. So let's go ahead and dispel with the confusion and get into solving this problem. Okay, so first things first, what type of equation are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with something called a radical equation. So some of you might be saying, well, that's a square root symbol. Yes, indeed, uh, a square root is called a radical uh, in mathematics. Now let's just take a look at a very, very simple type of um, problem here, uh, just to kind of understand the basics of solving a radical equation. So if you have like the square root of x is equal to two, okay? So to solve for x, to solve a radical equation, what we want to do is get the square root or radical on one side of, uh, of the equation and one number on the other side. Now, this is what we like to do. Sometimes you have to take multiple steps, but this is kind of uh, the initial goal. Now, once we have uh, an equation written in this manner, to get rid of the square root or radical, what we need to do is square both sides of the equation. So when you square a square root, you just are left with the thing that's underneath the square root. So that's what we want to do here, but we're not quite ready yet to square both sides of the equation because we've got this three hanging out over here. So let's get this three kind of linked up with this eight. So what we'll do is subtract three from both sides of the equation, and we're left with negative square root of two m plus two is equal to five. Okay, so hopefully you're like, yes, yes, this makes sense, Mr. YouTube Math Man, please continue. Okay, now at this point, we have a radical and a number, or a square root and a number, so we want to get rid of the square root. So we're going to square everything on this side to include this negative right here, and we'll square this side as well. So you can see that step written right here. Okay, now when we do this, when we square a negative, right, this is going to be a negative times a negative, that's going to be positive, and then here, our square root will drop away. So what we're left on, uh, the left-hand side of the equation is 2m plus 2. Okay, 2m plus 2. And then, of course, 5 squared is 25. 
Okay, so if you got this point, or if you got to this point in this problem, then you are doing very well. Okay, so uh, even uh, those of you that got the wrong answer, you did a great job. Okay, so there's a critical step here, again, that almost everyone gets wrong that causes them to answer the problem incorrectly. But all this algebra is good, and now let's go ahead and continue on. And what do we want to do here? Well, we want to solve for m. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. That, that gives us 2m is equal to 23. And then to solve for m, we have to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So m is equal to 23 over 2. Now, if you did all this work and you just stopped here and said, here is my answer, Mr. U2 Math Man, well, I want to give you like 5 out of 10. Okay, you get like a five out of 10. Matter of fact, I'd probably give you like a C plus. So good job, but uh, there is a lot here that you're missing. Now let's go back to this part of the problem, okay, where we square both sides of the uh, equation. Now when you square both sides of an equation where there's a variable involved, this part right here, this is something you need to be on high alert uh, in algebra equations, or we're solving various types of algebra equations, because at this point in the problem, when you square both sides, when there's a variable uh, involved, you can introduce something called extraneous solutions, extraneous uh, solutions, or extraneous uh, roots. Now, if you never heard of extraneous roots or extraneous solutions, well, then you need to work on your algebra. So stick with me, because this is very, very critical. Now, what does this mean, an extraneous solution? It means that you can introduce extra solutions. Now, in other words, when, you saw, um, when we square both sides of the equation and we get this solution right here, this solution is the solution to this equation. It may not necessarily be the solution to the original equation, okay? So that... Um, m is equal to, right, of course, I have the problem right here, or the answer, m is equal to 23 over 2 is the answer to the result of the equation when we square both sides, but it may or may not be the actual solution to the original equation. Again, we're trying to solve this equation right here. So how can we know whether it is a good solution or not? Well, there's only one way to know, and that is to check the solution uh, into the original equation. Okay, so in other words, let's just take a real basic example. If I have 2x plus uh, uh, 1 is equal to 9. Okay, so what is the answer to this equation? Well, we'll subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. We have 2x is equal to 8, x is equal to 4. All right, so let's, uh, uh, let's just suppose we have x is equal to 4, and you're like, well, I'm not sure this is correct. Well, how can we always check a solution? Well, we plug it back into the original equation and see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So we'll replace this x with a 4. Now I have 2 uh, times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is this 9. Well, 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 is equal to 9. That's a true statement. So therefore, this solution is a good solution. So when you are checking solutions into an equation, what we're looking to do is to see when we plug in uh, this number and we replace uh, m for this value and then simplify all this math, are we going to get an 8? Okay, because that's really what is on this side of the equation. We're hoping that all of this stuff, when we do the math and we replace this M with this number, it's also going to be an 8 on this side of the equation. Okay, so some of you might be saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand that. And that's what I did. But, uh, you know, I still got this uh, right. Okay, or you're, or you're wrong and I'm right. Well, you know what? Again, you very well uh, may have made this error. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, replace this M with 23 over 2 and see what happens. Okay, so we're left with uh, 3 minus the square root of 2 times 23 over 2. So 2 uh, times 23 over 2, the 2's cross cancel. So this is going to be 23 plus 2. Okay, hopefully you're up to speed on your fraction. So 23 plus 2 is what? That's going to be 25. So we're down to 3 minus the square root of 25 is equal to 8. Okay, so now again, we're looking to see if this stuff right here is going to be 8, because if this is all equal to 8, then 8 is equal to 8, then this is a true statement, then uh, it's going to uh, basically confirm that this is a good solution. But it's not a good solution, because I already told you the answer in the beginning of this video. So let's go ahead and check this. All right, so now finally we are at this kind of uh, crossroad, which is the whole point of this video. 
All right, so three minus the square root of 25 is equal to eight. So what is the square root of 25? Okay, so I'm asking you a question right now. What is the square root of 25? Now, a lot of you, especially um, those of you that are studying algebra, you're going to say, well, it's plus or minus five. Here, here's the answers that are going to be common. So when it comes to the square, uh, when it comes to the question, what is the square root of 25? You're going to get basically two answers. You're going to get, well, it's five or positive five or plus or minus five. Okay, positive, negative five. Now, why would there be a negative involved? Well, the square root of 25, if it's negative times a negative five times a negative five, indeed is a positive 25 because a negative times a negative is a positive. So it could very well make sense that the square root of 25 is both positive and negative. So here, what do we uh, use? What value of the square root of 25 should we use? Should we use five or negative five to you know, check this equation? Because we're not done. We're still trying to determine if this side is equal to eight. So let's go ahead and just use negative five here and see what happens. Okay, so with negative five, we have three minus and minus five. 3 minus and minus 5 right here is 3 plus 5, and 3 plus 5 is 8, and 8 is equal to 8. That is true. So some of you are out there, come on, Mr. U2 Math Man, you did this wrong, I did this right. So what is your major uh, problem? Uh, you are not teaching algebra correctly. Well, you, uh, again, made this error. This is an error, okay? Now, why is this an error? Well, I'm going to go ahead and explain this right now. This is the whole point of this video, okay? The whole point of this video is to get us to this step. All right, now we see here, just to kind of go back, that this balances out. In other words, this side, if we use negative 5, if we assume that the square root of 25 is both, say, positive or negative 5, and then we use the value of negative 5 um, uh, as the result of the square root of 25, well, then this balances out, but that is not the case. The square root of 25 is not a negative 5. The square root of 25 is only a positive 5. Now, some of you might be shocked by that. You're like, what are you talking about? Well, yes, indeed, this is something called the principal square root. And, you know, again, I've been teaching for decades, and, I mean, tens of thousands of papers, literally tests, grades, quizzes, whatever you want to say, uh, years and years and years. This is a very common uh, uh, part of um, algebra and mathematics that's highly confused because the square root of a number, when you take the square root of a number like this, what we're doing is finding the principal square root, the principal square root. And the principal square root effectively is the positive version of the number. So the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, when you go to take the square root of 25, it's 5. But some of you still might be... Uh, not convinced. You might be saying, yes, but it's positive negative 5. Why do we use positive negative 5? Well, that is a great question. So let me go ahead and address that right now. So let's suppose I have an equation like this. This is a basic quadratic equation. x squared is equal to 25. Well, in a quadratic equation, there's always two solutions. So to solve this equation, I need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 25 in this case we use both the positive and negative because these are our two answers to this quadratic equation. So when you study quadratic equations, you will have two solutions, which will be like a positive. Well, in, in a, a case like this, uh, one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. So when it comes to uh, roots and solutions, uh, this is where you use the positive and negative, okay, which it does come up. So again, this is very confused. It's very kind of, you know, subtle, but it's something you have to keep in mind because here we are trying to check the square root of 25 and we just need to use the value of 5, not negative 5, because when we do use negative 5, the answer turns out to be right, but this is not the case, right? So let's go ahead and actually see uh, the rest of this problem uh, played out. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly ask you to hit that subscribe button. I need your support. If you like this content, if it's helpful to you, well, you know, what's helpful to me is having people subscribe to my channel. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification button as well. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, I just want to let you know that I have a ton of videos, well over 2,000 videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. But if you are a, a student and you need a specific help with this level of algebra, 
I want to direct you towards uh, one of three courses, my Algebra 1 course, my Algebra 2 course, or even my Pre-Calculus course. Uh, courses. You'll find links to those uh, courses in the description below. And if you're somebody who's not a student and you're just kind of maybe, you know, watching this video kind of maybe from a nostalgic standpoint thinking, boy, I used to like doing algebra way back in the good old 1970s or 60s or 80s, or whatever the case is, or maybe you have a need to relearn mathematics and you kind of want to start rebuilding your math skills, well then check out my new course. You'll find a link to it in the description as well. It's called uh, Math Skills Rebuilder. In that course, I cover everything from basic math to kind of build up, completely rebuild your math skills. So we start off with basic math. I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some trigonometry and probability and statistics. Uh, so that is a great course for those of you that kind of want to immerse yourself or build yourself up to really understand this stuff. But let's go ahead and take a look at this problem now and do this correctly, which course there is not going to be a solution. So here is our original equation. And we're going to go ahead and check that solution uh, by replacing m. And so we get down to this point in the problem, right? So we got 3 minus the square root of 25 is equal to 8. So we're thinking about this for a second. Oh, this right here, we're just taking the square root of a number. So I have to just use the principal square root, which is the positive version of that number, which, of course, is just not going to be 5. So now I have 3 minus 5 is equal to 8. We're looking to see if this is true. Clearly, this is not true because 3... Uh, minus 5 or 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 is not equal to a positive 8. So, you know, you, at this point, you know, what you have is a false situation, which means there is no solution. And what you don't want to do is be tempted and be like, you know what, uh, that doesn't make sense to me because negative 5 works. So maybe I'm just going to just answer with negative 5. No, you need to be confident in your conviction. And if your math teacher, your algebra teacher, you know, says that you're wrong, well, then you need to show them this video because, again, uh, this uh, this concept of extraneous roots, this is a tremendously important uh, topic because uh, anytime you square both sides or multiply both sides of the equation by a variable, you will have the potential for extraneous roots, and you need to know how to properly check them. And, uh, again, do not feel bad if you got this wrong because if you were able to get the um, uh, m is equal to 23 over 2. Well, you did a lot of good algebra. The only part of the problem that you didn't understand is what pretty much, you know, nobody understands. But hopefully now you'll be like, wow, that was so informative. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.